Now it's time to look at the 20 unique amino acids that we find in proteins and look at their R chains and see how they're different from each other and make predictions about how they will act in a protein. We are going to separate these amino acids into categories. The first category being the nonpolar hydrophobic amino acids. <laughs> Acids. The hydrophobic group of amino acids are going to have R chains that are primarily carbon and hydrogen chains. They're going to obviously be hydrophobic. And in a protein, hydrophobic amino acid residues are going to be away from the aqueous exchange, like wherever the protein is interfacing with water, the hydrophobic amino acid residues are going to be away from there. So in the case of, say, a globular protein, it will be in the core of the protein. Now, Glycine is one of the unique amino acids. It only has a hydrogen for its R chain, so it's going to be the only amino acid that doesn't have four different groups on its alpha carbon. It is not going to be asymmetric, and it will not be chiral, so there's not going to be a DNNL version of glycine. For a quick review, all amino acids are going to have the alpha carbon in the center that is bound to a hydrogen, and it's also bound to an ammonium group, an NH3 group. It's actually, it was an amine group, but it will be protonated at physiological pH. We also have an alpha carboxyl group. We're going to call it a carboxylate group because it will have lost the hydrogen or be deprotonated at physiological pH. And so therefore the central alpha carbon, the ammonium group, the carboxylate group, and the hydrogen are going to be the exact same in all 20 amino acids. The only thing that's changing is the variable R group. And with glycine, it's the smallest one because it has a simple hydrogen as its R chain. The next unique amino acid is proline. It doesn't really have an R chain, but rather the R group actually, it, it kind of, it folds back and bonds upon itself. So the actual R group is going to be a CH2, 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 but it's linked to the nitrogen in the amino group. So then actually proline is not an amino acid. It is going to be an amino acid with an I because we have changed the nitrogen group. Okay, moving on to the first and smallest hydrophobic amino acid residue. We have a simple methyl group, CH3, as the R chain. The next hydrophobic amino acid is valine and it is beta branched. You have the central alpha carbon, then the first carbon bound on the R chain is the beta carbon, and at the beta carbon is where we have a branch. I like to think of valine if you, you obviously know what the letter V stands for and you need to know the one letter code anyway. Well, if you look at this R chain, it is in the shape of a V. Okay, the next hydrophobic is leucine. It's just like valine, but you're gonna add another carbon. So we're gonna have a gamma branching. Uh, going back to the alpha central carbon, we have the beta, which is the next, or actually the first carbon in the R chain. Then we have the gamma carbon, and at the gamma carbon is where we're gonna branch. So the actual R chain is a CH2CH with the two CH3s on the terminal ends. We know we have the central C alpha on the leucine. The next one, which is the the first one in the R chain is a C beta. The next one in the R chain is going to be a C gamma. And then those two terminal methyl groups, those are going to be deltas. You'll just call one of them delta 1, delta 2. So that is the nomenclature on the carbons in this chain. Next up is isoleucine. So if we have leucine and then we have isoleucine, I'm pretty sure you can guess that it's an isomer. But if we look at the R chain, we have a CH, then we have a CH3, CH2, and another terminal CH3. So on the beta carbon, we have one methyl group, and on the other side, we have an ethyl group attached to it. 
So thus far, we talked about the hydrophobic amino acids, and those R chains only have had carbon and hydrogen in it. But methionine, it actually does have a sulfur in it, but we still consider it to be a hydrophobic amino acid. So we have the C alpha. In the R chain, we have the C beta. Then we have C gamma. Then we have a sulfur group attached to the C gamma, followed by a methyl group attached to the sulfur. So methionine and cysteine are the two amino acids that contain sulfur. But again, how methionine acts in a protein, we're going to group it in a hydrophobic group. Tryptophan is the largest amino acid. Its size will affect protein folding. It will give steric hindrance due to its size. We have in the R chain an indole group attached to the CH2. This amino acid is very bulky and again it will affect protein folding. This amino acid is quite rare. It's not going to be present in any large percentage in proteins. All of the aromatic amino acids, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, are going to be useful in an analytical lab to detect protein samples. They are going to absorb UV light at 280 nanometers. So we can use this as a useful tool. Okay, phenylalanine is just like alanine. Remember, alanine had a methyl group, but we're going to take one of the hydrogens and replace it with a phenyl group. So we're going to call this phenylalanine. This is an aromatic amino acid, and what is unique about aromatic amino acids is that they can absorb UV light. So we can actually use these um, aromatics, the phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, as tools in the lab to detect proteins, proteins in samples. The next group that we're going to talk about, yay, 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 is the polar amino acids, the non-charged polar amino acids. These are going to be hydrophilic. We're going to have oxygen and nitrogen, and these are going to be able to form some hydrogen bonds with the aqueous environment that they are going to be interfaced with and with each other so they can form a hydrogen bond network. Within the polar group, we're going to have an oxygen or a nitrogen or both, and even a terminal sulfur group with a cysteine. We still have the typical alpha carbon in the center. All of these are going to be chiral. Okay, looking at a Asparagine. What we have in our R group is an amide group, which is the C double bond O to the amino group. This is an amide group. With asparagine, we have a beta carbon attached to this amide group. With glutamine, if we compare it to asparagine, the only difference is that we have an extra carbon in the chain, so therefore the amide group is going to be attached to the gamma carbon. Other than that, the asparagine and the glutamine are the same. Again, the glutamine has one extra carbon, therefore the amide group is on the gamma carbon, but with asparagine, the carbon is a beta carbon that is attached to the amide group. The amide group can participate in hydrogen bonding. The C double bond O, the carbonyl group, that oxygen can participate in a hydrogen bond, and so can the nitrogen of the amide group. And again, both the asparagine and the glutamine have this amide group that can participate in hydrogen bonding. So the amide group can participate in hydrogen bonding not only with other amino acids, maybe in the, the folding process, or with the aqueous environment. So again, the carbonyl oxygen can participate in a hydrogen bond as well as the nitrogen in the amide group. Next is serine, and we have a CH2OH group, and the hydroxyl group is able to participate in the hydrogen bonding. Okay, threonine has on the beta carbon a methyl group and a hydroxyl group attached. The hydroxyl can participate in hydrogen bonds. So the only difference between serine and threonine is the additional methyl group on the beta carbon of threonine. 
Next is cysteine, and what is unique about cysteine is that it has a sulfhydryl group on the terminal end attached to the beta carbon. The other sulfur-containing amino acid was methionine, which is in the hydrophobic group. With cysteine, the difference between cysteine and methionine is instead of the sulfur being attached to another methyl group, we have instead the sulfur is attached to a hydrogen, and therefore the CH2SH is a thiol group for the R chain of cysteine. Here with tyrosine, it's going to be very similar to phenylalanine, except for the terminal hydrogen is going to be replaced with a hydroxyl group. We can have this OH group participating in hydrogen bonds, whereas phenylalanine was in the hydrophobic group. Tyrosine is also an aromatic amino acid. So with tyrosine, we have a CH2, the phenyl group, and an OH group on the terminal end. Okay, the next group of side chains that we will cover are acidic amino acids. We have aspartic acid and glutamic acid. Both of these at physiological pH will be negative. Okay, since amides come from carboxylic acids, if you look back to asparagine that has the amide, it is going to have come from aspartic acid and glutamine, which has an amide, came from glutamic acid. So now we know that the relationship between these four amino acids if we look at aspartic acid, we see that it has a C, double bond O, and O minus at physiological pH. So aspartic acid gives rise to asparagine, and glutamic acid gives rise to glutamine. So with aspartic acid, we have two what were carboxylic acids. Uh, we have one that's in the traditional structure of every amino acid and then we have a second one the pka of it is a 3.9 glutamic acid we have the same we've just added just like with glutamine we just added one ch2 group to the chain and now our pka of this carboxylic acid or carboxylate ion is a pka of 4.1 so for a review if the pka value is less than the ph you will find that this will be deprotonated and with both aspartic acid and glutamic acid, they will be negative at physiological pH. Their carboxylic acid group on their side chain will be deprotonated. now covering the basic amino acids. The side chains are going to have a positive charge because their pKa is going to be above the physiological pH of 7.4. With lysine, we have a chain of CH2s. We have four CH2s bound to another amine group or ammonium group that will be protonated again because the pKa is higher than the pH of 7.4 at physiological pH. Histidine is next, and it is one of the most important amino acids. It will be participating in multiple biochemical reactions, so we'll be revisiting histidine throughout this series. We have what is called an amidazole group with the histidine side chain. Arginine has a three carbon aliphatic straight chain, aliphatic being hydrocarbon, the distal end of which is going to be capped by a guanidinium group. With both the acidic and the basic amino acid groups, these being charged hydrophilic molecules, they are going to want to be on the surface interfacing with the aqueous environment in a protein.
Good Witch signing off for today. See you next time on Dr. Bond's Science Theater.